T T B Music Podcast. talk about how hot it is in here first it's quite warm it's, it's yeah. nice it's a nice hot summer evening, evening. yeah and this is podcast uh, i believe this is podcast six uh, mistakenly as was pointed out by my one true fan we seem to have jumped we seem to have jumped from podcast four to podcast six in the listings and she was wondering about podcast five why and i obviously said that was the secret podcast oh that's the secret one we did yeah yeah um or my you inability to read never know what we review yes <laughs> Well, my inability to kind of read a list of things that says one, two, three, four, uh, you'd have been five. Rubbish. You'd have been rubbish at Star Wars. Anyway. <coughs> yeah. Anyway, we're back. And because it's warm, you might expect that this might be uh, brisker than it usual. brisk. We've actually waited a good hour or so to do this. We have. <laughs> uh, so, so, what we have, down. we have uh, Lord, Lordy, uh, Melodrama, second album from her. Lord. Well, second album from Royal Blood, How Did We Get So Dark? Uh, Jason Isbell plays his album The National Sound uh, Fleet Foxes Crack Up uh, Marika Hackman I'm Not Your Man and uh, French Indie Stars Phoenix with TMO uh, uh, We'll start with Lord who obviously made a big splash uh, about four or five years ago now I suppose, but I suppose it was um, when critically she was kind of lauded for, for, oh. for, for want of a but 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 word, but it was but it was it was, it was almost like the second kind of coming when she was kind of when kind of royals came out and people going I remember oh royals. my god she's just the best thing ever best in the world blah, blah 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 yeah um are we still worshiping Peter um yes yeah I think there's still some um, worship and praise deserving of the Lord a eh? yeah, very good <laughs> thank you um this album. Uh, without sort of ruining the rest of the podcast probably comes out in the sort of upper echelons of this particular selection of records that we're reviewing today um, it is a, a good pop album it does not shy away from darker uh, lyrical content that is to say um, the, uh, the, the the themes that she explores particularly around um, life and love and, yeah, there's certainly, uh, there's certainly mel- melancholy. And mel- there's drama. definitely melancholy and as well as melodrama, track seven, um, in there as well. And uh, you know, a, a, a couple of albums actually on this podcast deal with the issues of uh, faithfulness and uh, treason. And uh, and for 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 one so young, she does it so well. Indeed. Yeah. No, I really enjoyed this album because I, as, as I'm sort of waffling but getting to and I'm conscious of the waffle because it's so hot in here. Um, it, whilst it's a great pop album, it, it's not afraid to go there. Yeah. Mm. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, I can agree. I, I, was, I was kind of undecided about this album until um, today, actually. Probably. Mm. Um, because I, I was... The lead track on the album Green Light has, has been around for about six months now and was the yep. lead, lead single of it. Cracking pop tune. It as, is. As, as we said. Yeah. Certainly one of the best pop tunes, pop singles of the year so far. And um, because of that, that was kind of overweighing the album. For, well, the first couple of, couple of listens, that was kind of overweighing the al- album a bit. But today, it kind of fell into place for me a bit, bit more. And um, mm-hmm. what, I, what I do like about. about her approach to music it reminds me a lot of um, Grimes and Haim funnily enough who have yeah. got a new, their new album comes out today uh, which I'm sure we'll probably end up reviewing next podcast um, an abil- ability to kind of harness your obvious influences while still delivering an album that still sounds very much mm. today yeah and we've listened to, we've listened to a lot of our albums that, that have tried to do that kind of thing over the last few years and I think most of them have failed personally mm. uh, I think this actually 
does mm. it really well. You've got, the, you've got the kind of Prince things in there, you've got the Kate Bush things mm. in there, you've got the kind of thing. And as you, and as you said, it's kind of encompassed in this kind of whole of lyrical approach that she's got, um, which actually makes the, the songs actually quite interesting. Um, so I, I think over, over, overall, I think it's a really, really, really strong album. It obviously starts with Green Light, like I said. First p three tracks in particular, I think, are Green Light, Sober, and Homemade Dynamite, I think, are really great. Um, and then it kind of gets mellower, you know, mellow, mellower a bit, bit, and then kind of kicks on again towards towards, towards the end. Uh, I think this is a, just a really, really good pop record. I what I like is her ability to tell a, convey a story in each track as well. Um, the lyrics, she's able to convey a lot in three and a half, four minutes. Yes. Um, and um, there's one. It's, it's one of the cheesier <coughs> lines that really sort of made me smile um, because there's a very, there's a very nice sort of romantic track for the Louvre, uh, and there's a throwaway line in there. It's just like we're so great they'll put us up in the Louvre, probably around the back, in the back room somewhere. Yeah, in the back room. Yeah, but yeah. hey, it's still, still the Louvre. It's still yeah. the Louvre. Yeah. yeah. And I, like I, I just love that line, but hey, it's still the it's still the move, you know. Um, and I just thought that 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 sort of humour and that sort of light lightness, uh, um, it sort of really it really really appealed me, really made me smile. Um, in an album which you know can can also do the same for some some sadder, more melancholic themes as well. Yeah, well, I agree. Overall, I think it's uh, yeah, a album that I'm sure will be appearing in. Yeah, top ten lists come the end of the year. So moving on, we come to the second album. Um, obviously, it was Lord's second. Album, Lord's second album as well, but second album from uh, British duo uh, Royal Blood. Um, how did we get so dark? For those who don't remember, we reviewed their first al the first album when it came out a couple of, couple of years, years years ago. Did we? We did. I think I, I think we, we both we both liked it, but I think I was more enthusiastic about it mm. than, than you were. Okay. Um, Basically, it's a drummer, and for those who don't not familiar with the musical Uv, it's a a drummer and a bass player using lots of kind of effects and stuff and stuff like that. So it sounds more like sounds, guitar yeah. quite often. Although, although in this album, I think there is guitar and lots mm. of things as well. Um, the second, the second album, I, uh, it's one of those ones you're thinking. It's that classic start off thing by saying, the second album is kind of more of the same as the first album. Yeah. And your level of liking for the first album may influence your level of liking for the second album because of that fact. Um, perhaps is also a perhaps limiting fact in the overall sound. Uh, I think it starts off cracking. I think again, um, Harry gets a dark time track and light, lights out particularly. The first two tracks I think uh, are arguably the standout tracks in the album. It does then have an element of, mm, yeah, it's okay, filler, mm -hmm. filling out most of the rest of the album, uh, and finishes strongly with the song Sleep, which I also really, mm. really, really, really like. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's one of those records where, where I quite, I, I like it. I like it. I, I, I like. It's very, it's, it's very kind of seventies riffy. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm, I'm, you know, child of seventies. I like seventies riffy. It's good to have that kind of sound going back. However, I th I'm, I'm not sure there's much beyond that to kind of really, really, really engage. And at times it gets a bit too muse. That is kind of my issue with it. I, I, I was just, it's, got, it's got a whiff of Kasabian. Oh, that's even worse. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. quite a damning, isn't yeah. it? Um, uh, it's running through some of this, and, and I think that I find that a bit of a bit of a turn off uh, but I completely agree with, with you on it starts well and it finishes well it just it's it, there is definitely some filler there somewhere in the middle yeah uh, and for quite a short album it feels lengthy yes uh, I, I, I know what you mean because, because again um, that's just been a, a common theme for this, this year we've actually most of the albums we've been reading this year have um, totally are by, by accident have been quite short records we've had, we've, had, we've had quite a lot of <laughs> no we've had quite a lot of 35 minute 40 minutes 40 minutes albums we have yeah. I think there's four amongst the, the six in this particular particular uh, thing but I, I agree this felt like one of the longer ones mm. of the shorter records yeah no uh, so I've got, I've got nothing much more to add to that uh, yeah it's a solid album hey 
Moving on to uh, Jason Isbell. Uh, again, we reviewed his last album. Um, both, both, in, both, in, both enjoyed it. Um, isn't that? I think this is. I think this is sixth solo album. Three of which have been under his own, totally under his own name, and three of which, including this one, have been with, with, the, with the 400 unit. Yeah. Um, about six albums in ten years, so he's mm, been not uh, churning them out. Yeah. Uh, is the national sound a sound worth listening to, Peter? Yeah, yes. Moving on. Um, <laughs> no, no. So I, uh, we, 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 yeah, really enjoyed his last album. Uh, really enjoyed this album as well. Um, I don't think the last album we reviewed, he had the band. No, that, so that, that, that was that was a when, yeah. he, when he was touring, he was the band that tour, tours with him. But yes, it was. It was, was just a, theoretically the last album was a solo album. It was quite nice to have the band, though. I think this time it sort of it sort of refreshed things. Uh, somewhat and uh, and again it's sort of that classic um, country but it's actually more sort of American folk music you know uh, which I guess is what country is but you, you know what yeah, you know yeah, what no, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and 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 there's some, again some really great songs on here um, that that ability to you know tell a story in a short space of time is a theme I think I'm sort of sticking with um, but there was some some really you know moving material um i particularly like white man's world yeah because that that sort of took a yeah it, it kind of took took that as a theme and twisted it in a quite in a really clever kind of way uh to deal with actually um not only um you know what is coming through with the support for the trump for example yeah. In 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 the Rust Belt, and mid, you know, South United States, and you know, Middle America, but but also used that sort of discontent that the working class white man might be feeling to actually explore other issues around sexual and and race politics as well, which I thought was really really cleverly done. Yeah, I, I, I think that's a very, very good point on that that track. It is that kind of thing of you know, I think it's something that he's as someone from as an Alabama person kind of struggles with that whole kind of thing of you know, mm. what it means to be a, some, a white guy that comes from places where perhaps some of the people around you not all the people are perhaps less enlightened should we say yeah but without denigrating the people yes no absolutely it's, it's, yeah. Yeah, it, it, uh, it is um, yeah. very much that kind of thing yeah um, uh, I guess are the highlights for me, I like Cumberland Gap because it's just a jolly tune. <laughs> yeah, and I say it's well, it's, 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 well, I think it's weird. weird. It's the kind of, kind of thing when you, when you see the track listing and this, listen to the album. Cumberland Gap is kind of thing kind of you think would normally be the opening track of a thing. Yeah, because, because this is a weird thing by starting off with actually yeah a kind of acoustic acoustic yeah. ballad, ballad and then goes into the kind of rocky um, number. Yeah, um, which it, but it worked. It worked really well. Um, and then you've got the duet as well. Uh, it's with, a duet. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of duet. Um, with Mrs. With, Isabel. Yeah, with Mrs. Isabel. Um, so yeah, all in all, really enjoyed this album. Probably, we haven't done much country of late, or have we? It feels like we've done like a decade's worth. True. <laughs> <laughs> but this is probably up there as my favourite of this year. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think I think this more than stands up to the to the uh, the the previous uh, previous album this that we. Um, Dealt with, and I agree. The, the thing, the thing that kind of shines through it is, again, that classic thing that regular listeners will know that we are obsessed with people that can tell a good story. Um, but there is an element of that, that here, and as you say, is in this particular kind of case, it is about that kind of both addressing what it is to be kind of uh, a man from the south, and also addressing what it is to be someone that used to be basically a, you know drug addict alcoholic mm. wild man who's mm. now having now, now having to set, who's now settled down to married married life but also the thing i like most is is um it also kind of addresses the honker thing and, and his wife as well who is amanda shires who is a member of the member of the band and in the song um I think which one is it in molotov i love i love i love the line in molotov where it says do you miss the girl you once had time to be Yes, I, I just love love that yeah. line about the whole thing of you get, you get married and suddenly you're thinking, yeah, you suddenly, suddenly you haven't changed as such, but you have to kind of realise that there's some stuff that you just you just can't do anymore. You don't have that mm. that free time that 
you had when you were kind of single and or when you were <laughs> unchilded, yes, as, as it were. Um, so part of that, and I also like the fi- fi- there's also a similar kind of lyric in the final track, which is kind of kind of to his daughter, where where, where it says, um, "I don't quite recognise the world you call home, but find what makes you happy, girl, and do it till you till you're gone." And I also quite like that kind oh, of thing. Of, of, yeah. Of, yeah, just do something that makes you happy, mm. which I think is yeah. Very few of us do, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. For various various reasons. But yeah, I think really good record. Uh we move on now to the third album from Fleet Foxes, uh uh Crack Up. Um which bizarrely we've already pre discussed in a, in a <laughs> pre podcast drink with Scott's next door neighbour. <laughs> <coughs> but for the benefit of everyone else. Yes. <laughs> for the benefit that wasn't there in that discussion with Nick. Um <laughs> Yeah, this is this really, 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 uh, really love the first Fleet Boxes album. Yes, um, we went to li- we went to live between the first album and the sec- second, second, second True. album. Great gig. We also got to see uh, Joe Pugger's support act, who we also then became yeah. subsequent fans of. Although I'm trying to remember where we went to see them. It was it was it was one of those weird venues we'd never been back to. It was the the ex synagogue. Yes, the the tabernacle. Tabernacle. The tabernacle, yes. of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only time we've ever been for a gig there. Yes. Yeah. That was, that yeah. Was, that was. Um, really looking forward to this album. I read some pre pre reviews of it, saying you know, including some reviews that genuinely said this is Fleet Foxes Kid A. It's not. <laughs> Let's just cut the chase through it. Yeah. It's, not, it's, not, it's not. I really, really, really wanted to like this record. I've listened to it three times, and. It's fine, but that's kind of not a compliment to it. Mm. it, 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 it you've still you doing it wrong. You've still got the gorgeous sound. The gorgeous yeah. sound is still there. You've still got that whole kind of thing that harks back to kind of late sixties, early seventies. Crosby, Stills and Nash kind of harmonising vocals and stuff. Yeah, uh, Summer of Love type 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 thing, and it's beautiful. Beautiful sounds beautiful. But for me, the songs just aren't there this 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 time. And and having listened to this album three times, I could not distinguish any particular track on this album. I'm looking at the list of them now. I can there are a couple of songs that I didn't mind, but I could yeah. not tell you what those are. I can't tell. I can't tell because yeah. they all just washed mm. into one another. Um, and it, and again, it, it it's almost an hour long, and it felt almost an hour long. Yes, as well. This was um, yeah. so. Oh, hello. Who's that? Oh. Oh, that's you playing with the thing. I'm Ooh. sorry. Yeah. So I was getting listless listening to the review of the review. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, this was... <laughs> this sorry. <laughs> possibly of, of uh, all the records we've reviewed this year, this was actually one of the most disappointing ones for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I was going to say, because um, we always have this, this rule of thumb, you've got to listen to something at least three times. Uh, to get a real sense of it and I would say 99% of the time you listen to something three times and on that second or third listen everything falls into place yes weirdly the reverse happened with this the first time I listened to it and I was going to say um, I was originally going to say in my review um, this album sent me into a trance um, but that was a good thing yeah um, this album practically sent me to a sleep but that really was a good thing I didn't mean that as a as yeah. an insult I actually meant it as a compliment but actually that was just the first listen and it was a good good first listen um, but actually going back to the album subsequently it was it was kind of like wading through treacle yes it's it, it, you, there was nothing distinguishable within it you've already made this point um, but it, it, it just didn't it, I couldn't I couldn't find my way back into it it really was a one off yeah, no, which is understand. bizarre and a, a rare experience, I think, in terms of in terms of the, the albums that we review. No, it was weird because I, I agree because, like I said, I was I, I, particularly after I read, have, have listened to the, to the second time, I read some more more reviews and there were lots of reviews saying kind of same things. Like, oh, this is their this this is their real classic album. This is the one when they've kind of thrown the boundaries out and there's people comparing the last Bonavera album and various mm. other things. And you're thinking, no, 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 not that. No, see, that, that's that part last of our, part of our album was was was, was bonkers. Yeah, but, but good bonkers. Yeah, but it was good yeah. bonkers, and that was and that really yeah. was just going just mad. Mm. This is 
If this is going, if this is going mad, if this is going mad within the confines of what they're doing, it wasn't going that mad. There wasn't, you know, there wasn't lots of stuff going on. Where I was thinking, well, well I wouldn't expect to hear that in a kind of folk yeah. rock album. It just sounded like fleet boxes, but yeah. just not as good. Yeah. So, moving on, and moving back to uh, Blighty for uh, Marika Hackman. Oh. With a second album from uh, a young lady from these shores. Her first album was uh, apparently more folky. Uh -huh. she, she came, she grew up in the, in the folky side 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 of things. Supported Laura Marlin and various other things. Um, this album's called "I'm Not Your Man," and it's certainly more of more a indie indie rock record. Hmm. I think it's safe to say, Pete. Yeah, I'd say so. Uh, and uh, again, uh, like the Lord album earlier, um, she goes dark. <laughs> Yes, the she, the, yes, she does go dark. <laughs> she goes dark, but she goes dark. <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's again um, the, uh, rule of thumb again. Third, le third, third listen. I really got into this. Ditto. I struggled the first couple of listens. I'll Absolutely. be honest. Um, it's exactly the same. This is why it's so important, isn't it? Um, third listen. I really got into this. I, I really started to. Again, like album, other albums we reviewed, I really started to listen to the lyrics and I really started to get a, a sense of the, the story or the world that she was building in each of the... Yeah, which kind in, of does you help know. you connect with... Bizarre, yeah. it does help you connect with the, with the music as well. Exactly. Um, so, so tracks like um, Good Intentions and, and Boyfriend, um, I, re I really sort of... I, I could see the humour yes. as well in the darkness. Um, and again, those themes of sort of treachery and 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 mental or emotional incapacity because of bad love, you know, um, all sort of coming through. It was it, it was it was fascinating. And, I agree. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, mean, I, I j j totally, totally agree. I was I was exactly the same. First two listens, but I mean, boy, boyfriend stood out from from the off. That's the opening track. Boyfriend stood off. Mm. I really, I really like that from even from first listening and reminded me a bit of um, Speed Ortez. Yes. Uh, musically. I remember. Yeah. Um, but the rest, rest, rest of it wasn't quite holding together for for me at all. And yeah, and yeah, and yeah then I listened to it for the third time, which was uh, this, this morning. And suddenly I found that oh, I really like boyfriend. Oh, I really like as a. Really like pl really like play, good intentions, and yeah. my love of Cindy is really bonkers, and yeah. that's really really good. And then Violet, I really like, and Cigarette, like that's something else. Yeah, I actually like most of this record. Yes, indeed. Actually, actually, suddenly, yeah, actually, it's kind of falling falling it together. All falls and, in place. And I think, I, whilst having not heard her uh, previous more folky album, I would say this is a style that seems to suit. Yes. And uh, I would certainly be uh, more than happy, more than happy to listen to a second album from Marika Hackman playing this kind of music. Yeah, and, and, and indeed would check and would, would check her out live as well if she yeah. was uh, available at any particular point that we were doing things. So yeah, thumbs up generally. So let's finish off by going over this <laughs> channel. <laughs> so I think I think. This might be, again. This might be the sixth album, I think, for Phoenix. To grief. Who only really can kind of, again came really came, came really big in this country probably on the last album when that really took off. Um, this album, if you've heard the last album, again, it's kind of more of the same. They do they do they do have a distinct um, sound, which is slightly on the side of pop. Indie rather than rock indie. Yeah. Um, but it is kind of infectious. It, has to be it is. Yeah. Uh, and again, this, this album as well. I was, I was this first first listen. I was quite disappointed in it because uh, I was actually big fan, quite a big fan of the last album. And it was just like, oh, hmm, don't know about don't know this. And then again, by the time I got to the second and third listen, suddenly I was singing along and. <laughs> Or trying to sing along with the bits of the in French. <laughs> the, the bits of lyrics you uh, you understood, um, and it rattles along again. It's, it's it's an album that lasts kind of thirty five minutes, and it flies by. You could you could if you're being overcritical, you could could argue that too many of the songs sound a bit too similar. 
Yeah. And there probably isn't quite enough you know, contrast, musical contrast sound wise, but you know, I think that's being if it was lo if it was a longer album, that's the kind of thing I would definitely be picking up on. I think at thirty six minutes you can just about get away get away with it. Yeah. And overall I think it, it is, you know, it's a it's a fun upbeat record. It draws quite heavily on um, um, that sort of continental Italian disco 80s, and I'm thinking mm. early 80s, Yeah, um, that, that pops up in, and I'm going to say it, early Pet Shop Boys records. Um, yeah, no, but I think you're right, it does. Yeah, that yes. sort of influence yes. that, that, that they, they drew upon. Um, and but it, it but it updates it in a way if it is 2017 um and, and it does it by perhaps verging on the indie side um more than once i i, I find myself thinking of the likes of the yaysayers and so on yes there's sort of, there's sort of definitely a yaysayer element to it that yes. edge of that that crazier more eccentric edge of indie uh a more experimental side um and they sort of they sort of dip a toe in that and they dip a toe in sort of pop and disco and they sort of bring it all together and uh, yeah it's very infectious I didn't understand half the words but you know, it's very it's very, very infectious <laughs> <laughs> and it and it's, all, all the track titles have got exotic titles all, they're all exotic you know Tiamo Tiamo and uh, you know Tutti Frutti <laughs> um, yeah exactly and the Via Veneto uh, you, yeah, you just want to go to these places it <laughs> 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 yeah. No. No. Very sorry. So ser on a serious note, um, yeah, uh, a, a, a good a good pop album. Yes, uh, I agree. And a good album for a summer. It's a good summer album. Yes, yeah. very good album for summer. Yeah. So album of podcast. It's tough. Uh, uh, <sighs> for me, it's 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 one of two. Yeah. Um, and it's Jason is Bellow Lord. I would I would probably say the same. It has to be said. And I'd probably just and only just. And this might be because I've listened to it more. Mm -hmm. uh, side with Jason is at the moment. Yeah. But, but that's like I said. That might my, my reasoning for that may actually just be because I've actually given it more listens than I yeah. have the Lord album. Yeah. But, but but both are albums that are worth buying. Absolutely. Right. Until next time, when we will probably review so we'll Haim, Harm, Haim, Haim, mm -hmm. mm. and five other people. Excellent. Look forward to that. Ta-da. <laughs>